Greetings to across the known world and all over the place. This is uh, welcome to a look inside youth activities. I'm your host, is Gareth Biargi, your daughter. I am coming to you from the far northern reaches of the kingdom of Artemisia here on Calbarter's Corner. And we take a look inside youth activities tonight. I want to welcome my guest, Her Ladyship Adelaide Scars. I forgot your name. I can't remember your last name. Scarsdale. Scarsfield. Scarsfield. I wanted to say Scarsdale and I knew that wasn't right. She comes to us from the kingdom of Calentir. Um, first, before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone knows that the views and opinions expressed are those of the participants, do not reflect any official policy or position in the SCA. So even though I'm a seated officer, as are some of my guests, um, we are just here as people talking about the SCA and various things to do with youth. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, welcome Adelaide. And uh, please, uh, oh, first, if you are out there watching us in Facebook or the, on YouTube, please introduce yourself in the comments, please, so we know who you are, name and kingdom. And if you have any questions for us, throw them up there. And our backstage person, Jermaine, will be back there. Um, fielding all that stuff for us and keeping us in line. Okay. So thank you, Adelaide. Welcome to the show. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm very excited for this episode because children are really, you know, near and dear to my heart as is, you know, should be everyone's. Um, so I think um, discussing the children of the SCA is a very important topic to cover. Um, so let's see about me. Um, I started as a teenager in Onsteora, Um and I pretty much grew up there. I moved to Ethelmark um, when I had my daughter and uh, was a single mom. And I took a break for, you know, because I had a child and I was a single mom. So then... I was in Calentir for several years before I thought, you know, maybe I should give the SCA another look. And, you know, she was older. So I started in Calentir and I've been here ever since. Um, I was the local MOI, Minister of Youth, in my shire for a few years. And then the role for Kingdom MOI um, opened up. And the Kingdom MOI that we had at the time actually pulled me aside and said, hey, you know, I, I need to step down. Would you, you know, would you be up for taking over? And I'm like, sure, sounds great. So um, I don't think that she had even spoken to anyone else. So um, it was a taggart kind of thing. Um, I was the Kingdom Minister of Youth of Calentir for almost three years, um, stepped down right before the pandemic began, of course. So um, so, uh, uh, there was that, um, I, and since we are talking about the Yaffa program, um, I actually brought the Yaffa program to Calentir. Um, I introduced it. I got everything up and running. There were a few children that actually had great success. Um, but I, I feel, you know, there could have been more success, but there could also have been less. So, you know, that's, awesome. uh. That's about everything. I can't think of anything else um, that I can think of. Um, I think that I have, when it comes to the children's activities, I think I have um, a very, I think I've always had kind of a very, I hate to call it a Yaffa minded view of children's activities. Um, it's if you take an adult, a full adult class, and which might teach you 10 different skills and take three hours to do and you simplify it a little bit. So it's only two skills and it only takes 30 minutes or an hour to complete an entire project. Then I think that not only is that wonderful for children, even five year olds can sew something in, you know, in a few hours um, or in an hour and actually have something to show for it. And that gets them very excited. But also some adults do better with the shorter projects with the more simple format, um, even though Absolutely. it's technically a children's 
a children's class. So I, I really enjoy the classes that both children's and, and children and adults can get into. So I agree. Yeah. So um, before we get going uh, mm -hmm. too much further, I want to just back up for a second for people who are not familiar with it. Um, it's the Yaffa program, uh, Youth and Family Achievement Program. Mm -hmm. And um, it was devised by some people in Kaid. Um, the head of that was Master David of Kaithness, Kaith Kaithness, I think, um, who we lost just in this um this last few months so um i wanted to uh just call him out because of his fine work in in kind of developing that program and spearheading that project and really taking it on um it was brought in six or seven years ago now i want to say maybe as much as eight years ago it was probably developed you know it took a, a few years prior to that for them to kind of develop it and his idea, what he explained to me about it was that it was developed first as more of an arts program, but then they kind of widened it out and, and added in kind of martial arts and some other things. Mm -hmm. And that's why it got changed to achievement as opposed to arts. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that they had recognized, at least they had talked about, was that a lot of youth ministry mm -hmm. is, is kind of just really, really generic. Um, you know, go sit in a corner and draw on on some paper or you know make this one little thing but right. th there's just not a whole lot of skill being taught there's not a whole mm -hmm. lot of of any kind of pathway from what we do in youth ministry to mm -hmm. what we then ask of adults or even teenagers in an arts way so right. like if you want to compete in arts and sciences or something, that's a completely different thing. This mm -hmm. the, at least in, in terms of my, my kingdom. And, and I think in, in many of the kingdoms, at least at the time when they were developing the program, it was like, you know, we need it to be where we're taking the kids and we're doing something a little bit closer to what they are going to be doing. So there's not okay. this whole, you know, abrupt, oh, now all of a sudden you have to do research. Now all of a sudden you have to do, you know, it's a completely different thing. Right. And then yeah. there might be some way, you know, and also starting with the youth at mm -hmm. a young, young age gets them an interest in them, that stuff. If you take a kid, you know, let's say you take a, a fight, a, a boy or a girl, a fighter who wants to become a knight someday. Mm -hmm. And you wait until they're 20 and you say, well, you know, most good knights know how to sew. Most good knights know how to do whatever. And then they go, well, what do you mean? You know, right. if they've been taught that from being a youth, if you put the needle in someone's hand, like you said, you know, you can take a five-year-old and give them a blunt needle and some felt and they can sew oh. all day long. I just did that <laughs> recently. <laughs> I promise you, I have never given a five-year-old a blunt needle. I have given them actual needles. I don't even use safety pins, actual needles and pins or needles and regular pins and everything. And they actually, <laughs> they are very responsible with them. Um, yeah. You need well, a little bit more hand-holding because they keep, you know, unthreading the needle and then, <laughs> but but other than that, I've never actually had a child actually poke themselves or draw blood, which is yeah far better than what I do. Like, well, I've <laughs> sewn my own skin into things before, right? So, right. so I mean, I have been, but, I, and, here, but and I agree because the the really badly blunt, mm -hmm. really cheap embroidery needles I used for that youth right. thing recently was worse than if I had had a sharp needle and somebody poked themselves mm -hmm. once or twice right. because they were having such a hard time getting it into the felt that they mm -hmm. were, you know, don't use your teeth. Don't <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Do not use your teeth to pull it back out. And so, <laughs> right. I mean, that's, that's, you know, one of the things, some of the things you, you learn with kids. Um, yeah. So we're not going to talk about it as much as um, you know, there's lots of reasons why, Mm -hmm. But the Yaffa program has now been um, just recently, the society has decided that they're not going to fund it on a society level anymore. Mm -hmm. However, 
the bones of that, the structure is all there. And specific mm -hmm. kingdoms can continue to do the program if they would like to. Um, mm -hmm. It's not going to be stopped in that regard. And there really is um, some, there are some reasons for why it didn't work out the way it want, they wanted it to. Mm -hmm. And there are some reasons why on the corporate level, they're not going to support it as much because there, there was quite a bit of resources put into a website and some other things and right. just the maintenance of that going forward. But we're here to talk to you more about today, sort of about what the program is or could be, um, some good mm -hmm. things about it, some other things that we'd like to see changed. And hopefully, if you're still interested in it and your kingdom is actually doing it, um, we can you know, or if you're still interested in it and your kingdom is not doing it, it is something that we might be able to get you um, some more information on. Right. But in that, with that being said, Artemisia really never got on board with it. We, we tried, we talked about it several times. We never really were able to get over that hump. And then when the pandemic hit, it sort of really fell apart. So um, Adelaide here, has way more experience and I'm going to turn it over and let her explain to us a little more about how, what the program is and how it works and how it works best. And we'll mm -hmm. go from there. Sure. All right. Um, I do want to mention that Elisit, the uh, King or the society Seneschal has um, mentioned that she is going, while the Yaffa site is actually down now, she is going to have the Yaffa worksheets, um, posted where we can actually use them. Um, and also there are tokens available if, you know, if we want to um, use them. So um, let me see the Yaffa program, how that works is there are three different divisions. Division one is for the younger kids, I think five to eight. Division two is for the middle of the road. So um, nine to, I want to say 12. And then um, division three are the teenagers. Um, so each, it, it, the Yaffa program actually divides all of the hobbies within our hobby into a, uh, into, uh, I think there were 20 something different categories. So, um, and to me that's important because when I, when I encounter a new person in the SCA, a chatelaine always asks them, okay, great. What do you like to do? What are you interested in? Um, they need a multiple choice. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. If they've never been in the SCA or it's been a while, um, they're like, well, what do you, you know, I'm just now learning what you do. I don't know what you do. Right. Um, and so if you just show them the list of the, the Yaffa worksheets, they can say, oh, leather working sounds kind of fun. Let me take a look at that. And then just pull up the worksheet and it's got basic skill building um, exercises on there, some terms and definitions. They even have um, a glossary of books that you can, you know, borrow or check out at the library or even sometimes websites online that you can refer to. And you can see if you're actually interested in it before you say, oh, I need to buy some leather and some tools and some hammers and I'm going to, you know, go all out on this leather working thing. You want to give them those that multiple choice, especially as new as a new person, just like you want to give them a multiple choice as a child. Um, so the um, and the Yaffa worksheets, you know, were very they were set up so that um, the mentor and parents can help the child, help guide the child based off of their needs and their skill level. Um, and their responsibility, their personal responsibility. So just because they're division two in woodworking, I think that was a walking stick. Um, and so eight to 12 carving a walking stick. Um, that's great. But then, you know, after you get the carving done, then you can decorate it or gild it in some way. You can use paint, you can use wood stain, you can use uh, wood burning, I think was, was one, but some kids in that age group are not ready to handle hot tools. Right. So that's, you know, sometimes that's straight out. Um, and sometimes you aren't even going to tr trust them with, especially if they struggle with, you know, safety or cleanliness or, you know, neatness, then, 
maybe even painting would not be, you know, wouldn't be something that they would be able to handle safely. So, or, you know, comfortably. So, um, so there was a lot of leeway on how intricate and how many skills any given child with any given worksheet um, might need. So, um, and, but, and it was really designed around the parents being really yeah. instrumentally involved as well, right? That's correct. So division okay. one, um, I didn't check them all, but all, all of the division one worksheets that I encountered was 100% parent driven. You matched up with a mentor in order for the parent to ask the mentor, hey, this, you know, do you have this book? Can I borrow it? Um, do you have these tools? Can we borrow it at, at an event or something? And I'll return it when we're done with, you know, at the end of the day, or, um, can, you know, this worksheet says to do this, but I don't know how to do that. Can you help me? And so the mentor would just be like a sounding board for the parent. There's no hands-on mentor to small child contact. Um, and so that's what division one is about. It's parental led, but with a mentor to help the parent um, understand the worksheets and get through through things with their own child. Um, and then division two was a little bit of mentorship. So the mentor at that point, um, and I should also preface that with um, mentors are people who are at least reasonably knowledgeable um, in the subject. So if it's leatherworking, you do not have to be a leatherworking uh, leather working laurel, which was a perception in some kingdoms um, that you had to be a laurel or near to a laurel to in order to be a mentor. All you have to do is know enough about the subject to teach the kids the stuff that they need to know. You don't need to know everything by far. And some things you'll look at the worksheet and say, I'm going to have to look this up. I'm going to have to YouTube this and take a look at it. So, um, and that's completely fine. They just need somebody that, you know, knows what a leather punch is and knows where to buy the string to, I don't do leather work. <laughs> because the thought is that if you're at least talking to someone, well, so two thoughts I had was one is, mm -hmm. Um, that is one of the things that I had heard too, is that mm -hmm. everybody has to be like a master at it, it has to right. be a, a laurel level at it. Mm -hmm. And so in particular, like in our kingdom, and, and I've heard that across the board in some kingdoms where they didn't do it because it was just, it was, un, you know, it was not, um, reasonable to expect that, you know, I want to learn, let's say, um, pottery and the only mm -hmm. laurel i know in pottery is in utah two states away from yeah. me so that's just not gonna work sort of thing but just like the rest of the sca i mean we don't ask anybody you know the only people teaching classes are not laurels right you know if you feel confident and you can teach you know you've done the research and you can do something you've got that at least, you know, if you feel confident enough to teach it, you can teach it in that way. But I really okay. like the idea that it was more about um, reaching out to someone who also has that same interest mm -hmm. and who also knows, like you said, resources, where to find right. this stuff. What is right. the best thing? Like, you right. know, if I want to get into scribal, right. okay, what paper should I use? Right. What supplies, what kind of right. Yeah. Where do you find this stuff? Right. And, and at a reasonable rate, I mean, you can, right. you can go all out and buy like the best of the best and spend hundreds of dollars and grind your own paint, you know, pigments and, you know, do everything by hand and you could do a really good job. But if you're a beginner, I mean, I wouldn't say go out and buy the kindergarten, like the 12 or the, the six, you know, watercolor packet or anything like that to start doing illumination. But a mentor simply needs to be knowledgeable enough to say, hey, um, maybe I have an old set that I don't use anymore. So why don't you take these? Because I, I need them to go to someone that's actually going to use them. And then they're going to get used. It's by a yeah. child, but that child could grow up to do really amazing things 
And having a mentor that is interested in the same thing that the child is interested in could really inspire the child to some to do some great things um, because we all got to we all have to start somewhere. Right. Right. So. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it having. Yeah. One of the um, biggest or one of the big hurdles when it came to the Alpha program was people thought I'm not an expert, so. I'm not mentor material and they, they didn't go any further into, you know, seeing what the program's about. Um, I think when the program was first presenting, presented to me, I was told, and this was as I was stepping up as kingdom minister of youth. Um, I was told, you know, this office is not going to last much longer because the society is going to end children's activities and they've got some program that they're going to make us do. And I was like, why would they end children's activities? Children's activities are needed. Well, and one of the one so, of the things that um, that's a really good point, and that's something that I wanted to make sure <laughs> that we stress today, is that one of the things that I heard too was that you know you're going to get rid of youth ministry right. and only do Yaffa. And my opinion was just like youth combat doesn't replace youth ministry. The Yaffa program should not replace youth ministry. That's that right. those two things do not have to be mutually exclusive. That they actually can ha run hand in hand. And you can have a page school program and the Yaffa program. Yes. You could actually do both. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to go back to this over and over. It is a recurrent theme in this show finding youth people, finding yes. people who want to volunteer and work with the youth has been a challenging, mm -hmm. challenging thing. That's right. one of the reasons I did the show trying to explain, you know, also it's not that difficult <laughs> and it's not right. as time consuming as you think it might be. It doesn't have to be right. Especially if there are more of us involved and there are more things That's to correct. do. So maybe there's somebody who is way more of an artist and is not into service and is not into some of the other things, but boy, they would love to become a scribal artist. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, this is the sort of thing that they could jump into. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe there are, you know, I have, I have kids, I have boys that are like that. They just, you know, they want to learn how to fight only, which mm -hmm. is one of the reasons I like, I really like the, when they open it up and have, you know, archery and fighting and different things like that as some of the categories. Um, but one of the things I want to just jump one of the things back to you said that is um, I find really interesting is um, having a list of choices. Yes. Here's the things that can be done. Because one it's of the things that I've heard from parents is, well, if I'm brand new to the SCA and I don't even know what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. how do I know what to do with my kids? Right. And so I love that, you know, have, here's a list of some things that the rest of us do and enjoy yeah. <laughs> here, you know, because you don't know what you don't know to ask. Right. Like we're all your people, but based on what your hobby within our hobby might be, we're going to introduce you to your people, like right. the people that are passionate about the same thing that you're passionate about. And you're just going to feed off of each other and you're going to geek out together and you're really going to find a group of people that you can really like mesh with because, and that's another point is as an adult in the SCA, if any adult is asked, what keeps you coming back to the SCA? What makes you the happiest about the SCA? So I'll ask you that now. What is the happiest thing? What is the thing that keeps you coming back to the SCA? If you want to leave a comment that that's wonderful because I'll read them later and see what you guys, what all of our viewers um, think, um, you know, feel makes you the happiest about coming to the SEA and going to events, going to your local meetings, going to fighter practices, going to demos. What's the best thing about the SEA? If you were to describe it in one thing, what would it be? So Izzy, what would your big thing be? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, for me, the best yeah. thing has been the fellowship, I think. <laughs> that is what I'm going to, I would place bets on this, that most, if not all, comments are going to be, it's going to be the people that I meet and that I, um, that I actually form relationships with 
um, that I get really great friendships with and I get really close with, I keep coming to the SCA to see my chosen family. Yeah. Right. So that is what we, um, that is what, you know, so many people are going to say. And, um, and I would say probably the next, the, the, other than that, for me, the godsend has been me being able to get it back into music again, performing yeah. again, playing oh, yeah. drums again. It had been a really long time in my life as an adult. I did the same kind of roundabout thing, you know, got married and raised kids and did some other things. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea when I found out that, oh, there's this bardic thing and there's people sitting around with drums in their hands. Oh, my God. And so I went, yeah, I went a little bit crazy. My husband, whenever he heard his first SCA filk, he was like, what? That person like just took the... Like they just Weird Al Yankovic that song, like, but, <laughs> you know, because he loves Weird Al Yankovic. He didn't know that normal people, everyday people, could actually yeah. do that and do that with, you know, with wonderful skill. So that that's amazing to see and um, and to hear from him. But also, when it comes to the interpersonal relationships, that's what children need as well. So absolutely, if we say that parents having children, bringing children to their children to the event, the only people that if the only people that the children interact with are their own parents, then that child is not going to be happy. They might as well be sitting at home playing video games or playing with their friends, having sleepovers and everything. And so many teens, once they figure out that they're old enough to make that decision, say, oh, you're going to go to an event, parents? Is it okay if I stay over at Jason's house for the weekend? Um, because, yep. you know, I know I'll get pizza and grilled cheese sandwiches and, you know, all the video games I can play. Because to those children the SCA can very easily become, it's just this thing that my parents drag me to and dress me in crazy stuff that doesn't usually fit me because children grow right. so fast. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, I so mean, let's, without let's, those interpersonal relationships with other people, you yeah. know, adults and children alike, then kids are just bored. Yes. Talk to the children, know their names, mm -hmm. be happy they're there. Yes, for sure. And I, I'm going to butcher that name. Sile, I think. It is. Sila. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, absolutely. I mean, that's, and for me, when I first joined my, my youngest son was 10 and my middle son was 14. And so it was all about getting them away from their devices and having them have actual conversations with people mm -hmm. and, you know, real right. conversations with real people. And thankfully, my kids were always, you know, pretty good about talking to adults. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have that as much. But they both kind of also had a couple of people their own age that they kind of group, you know, glommed right. onto. But that 14, 15 year old age, boy, it's right. just, it's so hard to get them through that. And that's a whole nother show. We'll talk about. Right. So, so, so this Yalfa program, I wanted to touch on one thing mm -hmm. that came out. Um, mm -hmm. We recently had a, a meeting with most of the, you know, a, a, a large portion of youth officers across right. the society mm -hmm. and Adelaide and I were both in there mm -hmm. and um, one of the comments, and we were talking in the pre-show too. So one of the things we haven't talked about with the Yalfa program is once you get, um, you, you pick this subject and you become proficient in it to the point where your mentor thinks that you deserve it. You, you get a token for it, mm -hmm. right? You get, and they are actually really close to this. I, I should have brought one on with me, but the, this is, you've got one. Oh, yay. So they're just, you know, a nice little token for oh, I don't have the things. I'm sorry. I, this is not a Yaffa token. Oh, it's just, but we all wear tokens. And so one of the comments that I had heard was, you know, um, and I've heard this as a negative comment and I've heard it of it as a positive comment. So I guess it looks, it's how you think about it, but it's like, it's like the boy scouts. Yes. Like if all you're doing is doing an achievement to get something. It's like the boy scouts. Mm -hmm. And 
So my my response to that, and I told Adelaide before the show, my response to that is we all wear tokens. We all do things to work on, you know, this is an arts token that I got from my kingdom. And this mm -hmm. is for the coronavirus work. And, you know, I mean, we all, service. there you go. We yeah. all have service or arts or whatever. Um, you know, you, you work to become a knight so you can mm -hmm. wear the spurs and the chain and the belt right. and, right. you know, it's no. all about that. And well, to clarify, what, that, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, to clarify how you get the token, how you achieve the token with the Yafa program is um, you have, you work through the worksheet, which does um, some skill building, some, so a little bit of research. We don't want to give research requirements too quickly because it will really discourage kids. Um, if you just say, you know, go from, we're not doing any research to that's not period where we don't want right. to period police the kids too much. But um, a little bit of research, a little bit of skill building, uh, whether it's with their parent or with their men mentor, and then they go on to a project. So um, if it's, um, say, if it's a, uh, I, I mentioned the walking stick for the woodworking. So if it's the walking stick, they're making what they actually make the walking stick and they complete it. And if they want, it's like, you know, brownie points, if they want, they can enter it into an arts and sciences competition, um, which we love to see children entering arts and sciences competitions. So uh, upon the completion of their project, then the mentor basically signs off on their worksheet and it's presented to the seneschal of their group, of the child's group. Um, saying that, you know, this child has completed their Yafa worksheet and their Yafa project, and now they're eligible to receive their token. And then um, some kingdoms, some local groups, um, they, it's really on, it's really on them how they want to do it. Do they just want to say, okay, you know, Johnny, here's your token, or if they actually want to call them into court and make a huge production of it, it's really up to, you know, the individual or the kingdom, you know, how they want to handle that. So that's how they got the, uh, that's how they got the token. So it's basically you, you know, you learn how to make something, you make it and you get a token. So um, that's, that's pretty much the program. Um, there was a misconception that the mentors also would have a lot of time dedicated to this one child when it really could be, uh, I think they designed it for two to seven hours worth of time with the child. So, and that's for the division two and three. Um, and so it could be two hours on one event, or it could be two hours over a course of three events. Um, you know, how, whatever it takes um, to get the child to learn the skills that they need to complete their project and they complete their project probably mostly at home. Um, if it's two or three events, two hours at a time, then maybe they bring, bring their project later. You know, they say, you know, I worked on it some at home. How does it look? I'm stuck in this spot. How, you know, can you help me? What do I, where do I go from here? Um, and so that's what the Yafa program was, was meant to do. So, um, there was a lot of resistance because people just didn't understand that it's not babysitting. It's not wrangling. Right. Um, the most disruptive child that I've seen in children's activities is a child that has attended an activity that they had no interest in. They, If they don't have any interest in it, they're not going to choose that subject for the APA program. But if they choose the subject... And then they start getting disruptive and it actually starts turning into a herding cat situation. Then that's when you have a t discussion with them and say, hey, so you did pick woodworking, but you seem a little distracted. Are you having trouble trying to focus? Maybe is there a different subject you'd rather be doing? And you just pick this one to see if you'd like it. You know, that's the kind of conversation. And I've had that conversation with people or with children. So you know, kids are, don't know how to exit a, I want to say a lesson as gracefully as adults do. So if they get, and they also don't 
understand usually don't have the experience to be able to sit through it and suffer through. Right. So, so they're pretty much, you know, at a loss there. They're like, well, I'm not interested in this, but I'm stuck here because my mom's here and she's watching me like a hawk. So I'm going to be here, but you know, I'm just going to do whatever. And so that's when you have that conversation, but yeah, it's, it's really an easy program um, to mentor. Uh, my daughter, um, my, my daughter, actually, she did the division three um, for glass working. She wanted to learn how to do stained glass um, at 11 years old. She wanted to do stained glass. Nobody mm -hmm. would, we were new in Palantir. Nobody knew us. I felt she was responsible enough um, to handle a torch. Um, you, I promise you, you would not give the average 11 year old a torch. No. Um, <laughs> right. But I, I knew she would be able to handle it. I knew she was responsible enough. Um, but it, I couldn't convince anybody, obviously. <laughs> That's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. Um, but at 13, we had um, a family move to our Shire and they had a 13 year old and she knew how to do lamp work beads at 13. And so one day while we were over at her house, her mom was like, so the kids want to go do lamp work beads. Is it okay if my daughter teaches your daughter how to do it? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I am a little nervous because it's a 13 year old teaching another 13 year old how to use a blowtorch. So, uh, but it turned out really well. They, nothing, nothing bad happened. What happened was beads were made and passion was ignited. So that is what we like to see when it comes to kids. Sometimes they just need a chance. They need somebody who's really excited about the subject and excited about teaching them. And it's just going to grow. And we'll have people, we'll have kids turning 18 and they're well on their way to become, you know, arts and sciences officers, you know, uh, you know, really great core members of the communities in those, um, in those subjects that they're passionate about. Okay. So, um, uh, so yes, that assumes that the, uh, there's a question about the too deep rule. Tammy Barr would like to know that assumes mm -hmm. that the mentor and the student will be able to meet at the same event at the same time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, doesn't it become an internet thing, which is a nightmare to deal with based on too deep. So very good question, Tammy. Thank you for that. So, um, that was one of the reasons why the Yaffa program during the mm -hmm. pandemic actually kind of took a hit because you are correct. So just to reiterate the too deep rule in um, our society and for most anybody working with children, mm -hmm. um, we require two non-related adults to be with the child. Um if you're going to be, you know, in an, in a room by yourself or something like that, mm -hmm. um, one of those, one of those adults needs to have an SCA background check. And so when we started talking about internet stuff during the pandemic, the society decided that that was, that was impossible for us to keep the too deep rule. Um, and that's why it actually has not been approved for us to do any kind of mentor student relationship mm -hmm. stuff during um this season now during this last meeting we did this we did bring this up and um i feel we feel like some of us who work in youth ministry feel like there's got to be a way to ensure that and do something with it because the entire known world worked on zoom and everything else during the pandemic and for us to say no we just can't figure out a way to do it is you know, uh, not as, as much of an answer as what I would like to see happen. So, um, that is something that, um, Elisette, is that how you say oh, your name? Elisette. Elisette said she was going to maybe look, try to look into, talk to people. Um, I really believe that you, we could do it. Um, it would involve another adult obviously, but if we ran everything through a sanctioned, you know, you can't, as a mentor, um, contact the child. But if we, we did it through, okay, you know, 
through your local seneschal or whatever, through the kingdom, whoever sets that up. Like we actually have um, a system in our kingdom set up so that we can do telephone meetings and zoom meetings mm -hmm. and stuff. And yeah. so if you can set that something up where, you know, the local youth minister who has the background check and the mentor and the parent and the kid were on the call for 20 minutes or half an hour or an hour or whatever it would take right. to get through that little piece of time. Um, mm -hmm. And it was through only through this sanctioned thing where, you know, I'm not giving you as an, as a youth minister, I'm not giving you my phone number. I'm not giving you, um, right. anything, any way for the kid to contact me, any way for mm -hmm. me to contact the kid directly. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's ways around that, but I uh, agreed. Um, it does take that too deep role. Now, if right. you're in an event and let's say you're in a great big hall and there's a table over in the corner and you and your mentor want to go sit at that table and there's 400 people walking around the hall, the too deep rule isn't as you know, as long as there are people who are basically in earshot from what's happening and you can see them over there, um, you can tell. And, and there are people that, um, whether you know it or not, there are people that are at events who are watching that stuff happening all yes. the time. I actually had something recently where I had, I had a peer come up to me and go, do you know this guy who's doing this stuff with kids over here? And he was really close to where I was sitting Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, actually, I, you know, he, he's a longtime player, but he hadn't really been playing much recently. Mm -hmm. and so she didn't actually really recognize him. And she's like, as long as you know who it's going on, that's fine. But, you know, there are people who are looking at that kind of stuff and they're going, yeah, yeah who is this guy who's like, and he was, he's a magician. So he's, you know, teaching them how to tw uh, spin plates. Yeah. And they were really having a really good oh. time, you know. Oh, the best thing, the best story from Calenteer that I have is uh, we have a Baroness that would always bring her friend's daughter um, from the time that she was small, 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 would bring them, would bring her to the uh, SCA events and would always bring her. And she is a de delightful child and she loves the SCA and she does everything. And then when she was, I want to say about seven her mom actually came to an event. So she was hanging out with her mom and her mom was taking, people were trying to get her away from this strange woman, like <laughs> right and left. It was no, it was no joke. We don't know who this woman is. So like, you better not. Like, Emma, Emma, have you seen? Have you seen Pita? That's hysterical. <laughs> it was great. Let's go find Kita, Emma. It's great. And then... <laughs> It's her poor mom. No, that is really funny. <laughs> it's great. But yes, during the uh, society call, we did discuss a lot of um, a lot of state safety concerns. And we tossed a lot around a lot of ideas and thoughts um, of some solutions to the safety. I think at one time, I don't think it was discussed during the call, but I think at one time folks were um, toying with the idea of using pre-recorded content to be able to Mm -hmm. um, teach a uh, Yafa program because if it's pre-recorded, then the parent can review the, the footage. And then uh, if they approve for, of it, then they can give it to their child and everything. But that prevents any kind of real time interaction. If the child is, you know, gets halfway through the video and gets stuck on something and has a question that's not covered in the video, then it gets, you know, they can get really discouraged. Um, and we really don't want that, but it was an option you know, that we were discussing. Um, I know one of the things that was brought up in the, um, in the society meeting was um, there are a lot of programs, a lot of um, volunteer programs with children. Um, and I actually do one um, for the last 10, 11 years, I've been doing junior achievement. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it's just an average everyday person um, goes and teaches a set curriculum to um, elementary school, you know, K through 12. So I, per I, per I personally do second graders. So um, I go into their classroom every week for five weeks and I discuss them and uh, I discuss how they fit into their community and when they grow up, how they're going to fit into their community and why we have money and why we have banks and why we have, 
why not everybody can be doctors? Because if your house burns down, we can't call a doctor to come put the fire out. We need firemen too. Um, we can't just have, you know, a few people. We need everyone. Everyone in a community is fit in, right? So that's the volunteer work that I do outside of the SCA. Um, but in order to do that, I do sign a commitment that says I will have no contact with those children in that classroom outside of the classroom. Now I do tell the kids that if they happen to see, cause it's in my community. I'm like, if you happen to see me at the grocery store or whatever, and you want to say hi, then bring your parents over, introduce me to your parents. You know, yep. I would be very excited to say hi, but they will not ever have my Facebook. They will not ever have my phone number. They will not even have my email because I signed that commitment and I am a okay with that. However, transferring that into the SCA for children activities. If I were to say, I'm going to teach a children's activity, but I'm going to make a commitment that I don't talk to the children. I don't contact them outside of this class that removes the base, the biggest opportunity for them to have a healthy relationship with an adult that is going to be the best thing that keeps them coming back to the SCA. I can see, um, I can see saying, you know, I'm not going to like, like we we're actually trying to beef up some of the security stuff mm -hmm. and safety stuff um, in mm -hmm. our own kingdom, at least. And that, mm -hmm. and I had talked to Ella said about, sending some of that on as suggestions for the society level. Right. But um, one of the things that, um, you know, I, I agree with you. I, I would, I would have a hard time mm -hmm. um, um, having the kids not talk to me other than when I'm doing the actual youth activity, because I walk into a place and they come and find me. Right. Are you doing anything today? What are you going to do today? What are you going to, you know, and they come and they sit with me, like, especially if they know that we're going to do something during court, they will come prior to court and sit with me. And so all of a sudden, all the chairs around me are like all the kids, <laughs> you know? And um, so I, I think I, th I agree with that. I think, you know, the contact needs to be um, outside of, of the event or outside of practices or something like that is easy to know, but, but during an event or something like that, I mean, it's really hard for me to go, Oh, I'm sorry. I can't talk to you now. That's yeah. not going to make, and that's not going to facilitate a relationship between me and the kids by mm -hmm. any means. If I'm like, Oh, right. the only time I want to talk to you. And, and it's not to say that every youth officer has to be the Pied Piper of children. Right. Okay? But you know, that just, it just happens to be, that's how, my personality is and that's how I do it. But that doesn't mean that because you want to do youth ministry that you have to be on from the second you walk in to the second you leave. Right. It just happens that everybody knows me because I do youth stuff. And right. They just know right. me and I don't care. And you know, most of the time I'm I'm with a group of adults anyway. So if a kid comes up to me, it's not like I'm alone. I'm usually right. with several other adults anyway. So right. Right. So um, we have been talking for almost an hour now. We have. <laughs> it's crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and do some business. All right. And then we'll come back and we will get some final uh, final um, comments no from comment. you. Yeah. Wrap up comments. Brain fart all of a sudden. That's and right. also really hard. a shout out to whoever you would like to shout out. So think right. about that for a minute while I go do some business for Cal. All right. And I do want to say that that society call covered so many subjects when it came to children. It could honestly be five different calls, hour long, two hours long on each different subject. It was very. Absolutely. It was yeah. really helpful, I thought. And I hope yes. we do more of that. And that's one of the things that that I really like is um, doing youth ministry oh. by by platooning it in. Not right. just one person, like getting more and more people involved and getting a group mm -hmm. of people involved to help do anything is always, you know, the more hands, the better, but also right. more minds, more ideas and everything mm -hmm. else. So, 
Okay, um, I'll be right back with you, but I'm going to do some business here for a second. So, out here on CalBart's Corner, we have some interesting things coming up for you. So, uh, Sunday, May 29th, we have a brand new show starting, and that is by Master Aslak the Awful from the Kingdom of Artemisia. He is both a pelican and a laurel, a, a magician, and he is going to start a show calling called Rekindling the Magic. His first show was May 29th, um, just this Sunday, uh, and, and it is Creating Ambiance with Baron Hightower. Aslak interviews Baron Bartholomew Hightower, a shining inspiration in Artemisia, Glen Aben, and the known world. A laurel in ambiance, those little things that create that medieval atmosphere we all love. Uh, Chet, dial in for that. That should be a really entertaining show. Uh, next, uh, after that, on Thursday, June 2nd, we have three former fat guys. This is a br another brand new show out on Calbert's Corner. Uh, episode one will be June 2nd. And the three former fat guys are Duke James, Viscount Ferris, and Baron Calbarter. And join them as they tell stories, swap insults, and frankly, just screw around for an hour. Uh, after that, we have another show on Monday, June 6th, called Unpack Your Shit, Art and Fear, Part 2. Join Baron Calbarter and, I'm going to butcher this, Uyang Taishi, as they toss off their titles, kick up their feet, and grab a book. For this two-part series, we are switching gears and switching co-hosts. We will be diving into and dissecting Art and Fear by David Bales and Ted Orland. This will be a free flow discussion of the reading. Feel free to join in and watch as we discuss what we have learned. And you can ask comments or questions in the comments if you have any. And for our next show, join us next month. Uh, that will be Monday, June 27th. We're back to the last Monday of every month from there on out. Um, and that is a look inside youth with our next guest, Lady Morin Nia Ingen Nathi. Probably butchered that one again, too. She's from the Kingdom of Onstiora. And we're going to be discussing making the most out of your youth officer experience, how you can get benefit and joy in doing youth ex youth activities. Because like we were talking tonight, uh, it does it shouldn't be. A bad thing. It should be a really, really fun, enjoyable thing for everyone. Yeah. So if you want to support any of us, please check out our grand wall of patrons. These are the people that we could not do this content without. We appreciate everything that, that anybody would likes to do to support us. Uh, if you do want to support us and any of the content out on Calvary's Corner, uh, you can go to Patreon. We take that and become a patron and part of our grand wall of patrons. You can also go out and support us via Redbubble. Out on Redbubble, if you look under KK's Corner or Cal Barter's Corner, uh, we sell stickers, we sell sheets, do nightly things, all sorts of things. Um, out there, you can purchase goods and that goes to support the content on the channel. Um, Last, if you want to contact me, if you have any questions on tonight's show or suggestions for future content or any kind of comments at all, you can contact me at isgareth.com, isgareth at gmail.com. Uh, if you would like to contact our guest tonight, this is her ladyship Adelaide can be contacted at uh, lee.waldak at gmail.com. And um, for my thoughts, I'm going to go into my last thoughts now. Um, I, I, I think that some of the ways that the Yaffa program has been presented, I think there's lots of misconceptions in it. One of them being the amount of time that the mentor has to spend. Mm -hmm. As Adelaide said tonight, you know, two to seven hours total. And it kind of depends on your relationship with the, with, the student itself or mm -hmm. how well the student is doing. And it will really depend on as well on the, the parental involvement, but, but I really hope that you do try to check it out. Um, there is just a wealth of information out there. We will be adding um, the Yaffa program 
sheets to the library on uh, the sca.org library, and you can um, check out some of the stuff. If not, please contact either me or Adelaide, and we will get you to whoever is in your kingdom doing it. And if no one in your kingdom is doing it, we will get a way for you to start looking into it anyway. Mm -hmm. And you have some last thoughts? Uh, my last thoughts is going to be a quote. Um, I believe Charles Swindle said, each day of our lives, we make deposits in the memory banks of our children. So I just want to think, I just want to make everyone, I just want everybody to think about what kind of deposits they're making for the children around them, not just their own personal children, but the other children that they encounter at events at their local meetings make some good deposits. I love that. That is awesome. Okay. And a shout out. Um, I am going to shout out to Colfina of Onsiora that actually, you know, whenever you were asking for someone that could, that was knowledgeable about the Yafa program, she was like, Oh, you should totally, you should totally talk to Adelaide. So that's how I wound up here. And then, um, and also Shyla, um, our current kingdom minister of Kalantir, because she is wonderful and she's totally on board with all of these things. I am sure. <laughs> awesome. Uh, for my shout out tonight, um, one is a posthumous shout out and then to his lovely partner, um, so David and Adelicia of Caithness mm -hmm. um, for creating the program in the first place, for really kind of thinking about um, the idea that we needed to do something more, especially in arts for the kids and maybe bridge that gap between youth ministry and what we do for arts and sciences. And anyone who was instrumental in setting up the Yaffa program that I don't mm -hmm. know your names Thank you, because I'm sure that they had lots of help in that endeavor and those endeavors. Whoever, all the people who put together the, the worksheets and put together the website and put together mm -hmm. the tokens and worked on the, the tokens are awesome. Um, there's just, there was a lot of stuff that went into building this program and, mm -hmm. and, and definitely it's something that I hope to see at least in part continue on um, across the known world. So, mm -hmm. well, um, thank you very much, Adelaide. It has been lovely speaking with you. It was a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we really appreciated having you and talking about Yafa and mm -hmm. I hope to see you at some point. Uh, it is a future goal to be at an event at every kingdom. So at some oh, point, mine too. <laughs> uh, we'll see you. And if you come this way, we will host you because we like to say that Artemisia does it better, but that's just kind of us. <laughs> so thank you again to everyone um, for joining us for your con questions and comments and being interested in youth activities. Uh, mm -hmm. The youth is our, our future and we really appreciate everything that you do for us and for the society. And with that, come back again next month when we take another look inside mm -hmm. youth activities. Thanks again. Good night.